Welcome back. This is the first video in a series of videos where I teach you Azure Sentinel, Microsoft SIM and SOAR product. Now, in this video, the deck that I use, I will be sure to provide a link in the video description so you can go out and download it and reuse it later. And then in future videos, we'll get more into Azure Sentinel. So let's jump into it. What is Azure Sentinel? Well, it's Microsoft SIM products. So this is a security information and event management system, but it also provides SOAR capabilities, security orchestration, and automated response. And when you think of Sentinel, I really want you to look at the circle on the right side and use that to define it. It's collecting data across the organization from appliances to user directories, to devices, to even other clouds. And then it's processing all the data that's coming in and it's attempting to detect threats using AI and machine learning. And then from there, it's going to allow you to investigate those threats by automatically creating incidents and then guiding you through the investigation process. And then it can automatically respond to those threats through uh, orchestration and, and automation. And we'll get more into that here in just a moment. So it's really a bird's eye view. Now, a little bit about Sentinel. It's cloud native. It's built into Azure. So you're not deploying any kind of infrastructure to be able to use this. And you're not having to do any kind of ongoing maintenance of that infrastructure. It's built in. And it's all available through the Azure portal. Now, what I like about that is it really has no limitation. Uh, you can uh, feed data into it and you're not confined by uh, hardware to be able to process that data or storage to be able to process that data. Now, what I really like about it as a security person is you can bring your own machine learning models and your own threat intelligence. And I know a lot of you out there in the security community, you do that. You have your own, you made huge investments into this. So you can feed that threat intel into Sentinel. Uh, that you use every day. It also has ties into the broader security community at large, even Microsoft Security Operations Center and then GitHub, uh, so you can get intelligence from others. And my absolute favorite part about this, I'm a visual guy, I like to see things, is you can build interactive dashboards to visualize and analyze the data through uh, Jupyter Notebooks and Workbooks, which we'll get more into in just a moment. Now, if you take a step back and you look at, again, what is Sentinel, it's collecting data from multiple sources. It's then feeding that data into the system to process it using user entity and behavioral analytics, machine learning. Uh, it's, it's performing queries on that data, and then it's responding through what we call playbooks to threats it might find in the data. And that data is being stored in the Azure Monitor service. And then from there, I can integrate with it. I can maybe have it automatically create a ticket in my ticketing system, integrate with my other SecOps tools, and then even share uh, threat intelligence through the GitHub community, and then playbooks and, and advanced hunting queries and that kind of thing. So when you think of Sentinel, I really want you to think of not only that first circle I showed you, but it's more of a data science tool, right? All this data that the tool is collecting, you need to be able to parse through it. And the traditional challenges with that is we don't have enough people to do it, they don't have skills to do it. Sentinel does that for you automatically. Now, I know a lot of you watching work at MSSPs or managed security service providers. Sentinel is multi-tenant capable. So it uses Azure Lighthouse to be able to combine all of your customer tenants, feed that data into one tenant to be able to go through it, analyze it, and then uh, automatically respond to it. I'll do more videos on this in the future, so stay tuned for that, but that's a pretty awesome capability. Let's talk about pricing for just a moment. Um, I don't like to go too deep into this, but I need to mention that, again, there's no infrastructure, so you only pay for what you use. And you can bring your Office 365 data in at no cost, and you can even do capacity reservations to make it even cheaper. Uh, but check out the link here on Azure Sentinel pricing. Be sure to make sure you understand how pricing works and is structured. And one thing I would like for you to think about as you go through this is that with that traditional SIM, you're, you're setting up hardware. You're having to maintain that hardware, databases, servers, adding new capacity, troubleshooting, all the operations go along with that. And then you're having to, to manage the software on top of that. And so your, your valuable sec op analyst out there, uh, they're not necessarily spending their days going through the data and finding threats. They're trying to manage and and maintain the system. Whereas with Sentinel, it's all in the cloud. You're not having to do that. You're really being able to focus on finding those threats in the data. Now, I included a Forrester total economic impact study in here. I encourage you to go out there and read it. Um, Forrester went out and interviewed some organizations that were using Sentinel, and they discovered that there was a 201% return on investment over three years with a payback of less than six months. That's absolutely huge. 
As a security guy, I like to look at this third bullet point. A 79% reduction in false positives was discovered and an 80% reduction in amount of labor associated with investigations. That's absolutely huge. So go out there and read about this. Uh, I think you'll, you'll be impressed, and I certainly was when I read it. Okay, let's talk about the integration here. How do we bring data into it? Well, because it's native in Azure, uh, it integrates out of the box with Microsoft solutions. So we're talking Microsoft Information Protection, Azure Active Directory, Azure Security Center, um, Microsoft Defender uh, for Endpoint, Defender for Identity, all of those different products are pre-integrated. And if it's a non-Microsoft solution, third party, there are connectors. And here you can see, as I took this screenshot in January of 2021, there were 63 connectors, more are getting added all the time. Here's a connector for AWS. And as you're to scroll through this, there's other third party connectors that you can use to bring in that data. And then if you don't have a connector, you could build your own, but you could also leverage standard log formats. So if your uh, source uses uh, Ceph or Syslog, uh, you can certainly use that to bring that data in, and you can even bring it in over a REST API. So it's flexible there. Now, what I absolutely love about this is, again, you can bring in your own threat intelligence. In the security community, that's just huge. I know a lot of you have made significant investments in some of these platforms. You can bring that threat intel in as a data source as well. I'll do another video shortly on data connectors so you can understand how to bring data in. Now, I think it's important to mention that you can ingest at no cost into Sentinel, Microsoft 365 data. So Azure Activity Logs, Office 365 Audit Logs, all of the Microsoft Defender products, Azure Security Center, Microsoft Cloud App Security, Azure Information Protection can all be ingested into Sentinel at no cost. So I put a link down here at the bottom of the slide for you to read more about that, but that's extremely important. I would definitely take a look at it. As far as detecting threats, so you have these data sources that are connected to the system. It's importing all this data. It stores in Azure Monitor, and then it uses built-in templates that it uses to then detect threats by sifting through that data. And those templates are built by Microsoft Security Operations Center and also the, the threat com or the security community at large. But you can also build your own custom rules as well. And again, I'll do videos all about this over time. And the cool part about this is it allows you to identify that suspicious activity through building these, these rules. Now, when you have enough rules that it finds to be related with each other, it creates an incident and it adds all those to rules to or alerts to an incident. And it just makes uh, slicing and dicing this a lot easier. And then you can assign those incidents to individuals and, and classify them and do everything you want to do from an operational perspective. And then once you want to investigate an incident, which is a collection of alerts, it allows you to take a, take a visual of all of that raw data that it collected. And so here you can see uh, that we found a threat, fail logins anomaly. We could see the user entity it's tied to, um, other things that are happening with that user entity on what hosts may be affecting cloud apps. And it allows me to just visualize that entire kill chain. And then from there, I can use some pre-built queries through threat hunting, either, even Jupyter Notebooks and uh, that kind of thing to be able to sift through the data uh, to be able to figure out what to do next. And then, of course, respond to it with a playbook. Now, as far as visualizing data, there's interactive dashboards built into Sentinel. And this is in the form of an Azure Monitor workbook. Again, I'll do videos on this in the future. This is really awesome. So you could build this interactive dashboard right in Sentinel for security operation teams to use. But you could also build a, a more high-level one for a CISO or a CIO and executive leadership. And then you can also use Power BI to be able to visualize this data as well. I've, I've met some people, they've added a Power BI tab in Microsoft Teams and just let people go through that avenue to access the data. So this is really cool. Again, we'll do a video on this. I'm always about visualizing the data because it just helps you better understand what's happening. Okay, another cool feature of this is what we call playbooks. And this is built-in orchestration and automation. Uh, if you're familiar with Power Automate, uh, it's similar to Power Automate, except uh, way uh, more complex and a lot more to it. And this allows you to automatically or manually respond to an alert. So as the alert comes in, it can trigger this playbook. And as you can see on the right side here, there's logic built into it that can do different things. So let me give you some examples of this. One example is as the alert comes in, you can have it automatically create a service desk ticket. Uh, another example is if you're running Defender for Endpoint, uh, it can automatically isolate a device on the network if it detects suspicious behavior. Uh, maybe if uh, a piece of malware is attempting to be ran on that endpoint, 
you can have it automatically um, kill that malware and only require signed applications to run. Heck, you could just have it close down a port in a firewall if you wanted to. Almost anything is possible with this. And it's based on Azure Logic Apps. And again, we'll do a video on this in the future, but this is a key part of Azure Sentinel is being able to automatically respond to these threats using either Microsoft tools or third-party tools. Let's get into advanced capabilities for a moment, and then we'll start to wrap things up. Uh, I love the threat hunting queries that are built in. And so these built-in queries were created by Microsoft security researchers up in Redmond, and they're constantly being maintained. And these are based on uh, common threats that are out there. And as you can see here in the screenshots, there's about 199 queries that are built in here, and they're constantly being added to that you can run in your environment. In fact, you can run all the queries and it'll tell you which ones it found here in the results column. And this is just a quick and easy way to check to see what's happening in the environment. Is there anything that we know about out there uh, due to like current events and current threats that might exist in the environment? And it does align with the MITRE ATT&CK framework and matrix to help you aid in, in investigating and responding to anything you might find. So again, I'll do a video on that over time. That's pretty cool. Also, Jupyter Notebooks. If you're not familiar with Jupyter Notebooks, this is a way to not only visualize your data, but apply machine learning and do advanced analytics on the data. And uh, I'll put a link in the video description for a little bit more reading about this. And I'll do a video on this over time as well. But this is pretty awesome. Uh, a good example of why this is awesome is I can take my data and I can combine it and wash it with third-party data, maybe it's a uh, geolocation IP. So I could bring up a map of the world to try to figure out where this data, uh, where these threats might be coming from or who might be impacting. I can have it integrated with the virus total API to figure out, um, you know, doing scans of, of maybe potential malware and files to figure out if they're malicious or not. There's a lot of different use cases for Jupyter Notebooks. And this is pretty awesome. And then you can bring in your own machine learning to do, uh, to do your, your own processing and analysis on this data. So again, we'll do a video on that later. Uh, user and Entity Behavioral Analytics. Uh, there's some other Microsoft products out there that do this. What I love about Sentinel is it treats almost anything as an entity. So beyond just users, it treats processes, URLs, mailboxes, registry keys, domain names, basically you name it as an entity, which allows us to establish a baseline of the behavior of those entities. And if it deviates from the baseline, that helps us to identify anomalous activity and then potentially identify a threat there and then respond to it. But I could also be able to evaluate what's the impact of that potential threat or its blast radius. And again, this is all aligned with MITRE ATT&CK to aid in my investigation. So we'll do a video on this, but this is pretty awesome capability. Here in the screen, you can see that it gives me a timeline of, of activities uh, that are related to that threat to aid in my investigation and in my response. Uh, you know, if you're if you're running a security operations center, uh, no matter the size, you you definitely are concerned about metrics, right? That's how you report impact back to executive leadership. That's how decisions are made, and those metrics are extremely important. So, built into Sentinel is a workbook, and as you can see over here on the right side in the screenshot, to be able to visualize those metrics. So every time there's an alert open and that's created, uh, there's specific tables in the data that get created for this that allow you to track the time that's been open and how long it took to close it, how long it took for somebody to actually triage it, um, be able to measure this per analyst. There's all sorts of interesting insights that could tie to it. And so you definitely wanna take advantage of this. And again, we'll do a video on this over time. Uh, watch lists, this is currently in preview, but this is pretty cool. Watch lists allow me to uh, bring in external data uh, to be able to, again, combine and wash it with uh, with Sentinel and be able to correlate it as, as other events. And so what I mean by that is, uh, let's say you have a list of uh, users with privileged access, maybe a list of all my admins or a list of terminated employees. I can use a watch list to create allow and deny list that I can use that can then use to detect and prevent those users from logging into the network. So this is pretty awesome. Again, I'll do a video on it. Um, I encourage you to go out there and read a little bit more about it but that's watch lists. Okay, we're right at 15 minutes. Um, I wanna respect your time. So again, we'll have other videos on all this capability. I'm gonna dig really deep into it, but hopefully this gives you an idea of what Sentinel is. Your homework I would like for you to do is check out the Ninja training. This is some amazing training. There's probably well over 100 hours of content on this website. So definitely check it out. The GitHub community for Sentinel is absolutely huge. 
So there's templates and other things that people have written for, uh, for Jupyter notebooks and workbooks and playbooks and threat hunting queries. And so, uh, again, we'll go through that over time. Your other homework is take a look at the technical documentation. Start there. That's going to help you develop a baseline understanding of Sentinel. And then combined with my videos and the Ninja training, you're going to be able to, to learn that much more. Okay, the last thing I'm going to leave you with is you have all of this data being brought into Sentinel, security data, threat data, potentially potential threat data. This allows you to process it and do it at scale. And there's, there's something really special about being able to do that. Okay, folks, uh, hopefully you found this valuable. Give me a thumbs up if you did, because it definitely helps me out. Share this with your peers, and it might help them. And we've got more videos coming on Sentinel in addition to other Microsoft security products. So stay tuned for the next video. Take care.